In this example of projectile motion, we're given the launch information, the speed of the ball and the angle up from the horizontal. And there'll be three calculations, the maximum height that the ball achieves, the length of the time that the ball is in the air, and the range, how far along this horizontal distance does the ball travel um, as it lands. And in all of this, we're going to ignore air resistance. We're going to assume air resistance is zero. So getting started on this, it's good to make a sketch. Horizontal line, straight arrow for the speed at a certain angle becomes velocity. And we go up to the top, and then we come back down. <coughs> and at the top, we can uh, claim that the vertical velocity is zero. This is V sub Y is zero and the maximum height being y. Well, to do this calculation in the vertical direction, we need to know the component of the initial velocity in the y direction. I need to know v naught y. And that can be found by completing a right triangle here. And we want this side, this vertical side, so that's going to be the hypotenuse, 12 meters per second, multiplied by the sine of 28 degrees. The sine function connects the opposite side and hypotenuse. The sine is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. So if you multiply that, both sides of that uh, verbal expression by um, the hypotenuse, we get this expression. You should try this on your calculator. The uh, vertical velocity is 5.634 meters per second. It's reasonable, it's less than 12. And the two components must be less than the uh, size of the original vector. Well, to find this maximum height, we do not know the time to the top of the motion. So in the kinematic equations, we search through them and we uh, decide, is there one that will provide me with the y value, but does not depend on the time value? And you can see t, 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 and here's our fourth one. So we're going to use this one that has the square of the velocities in it. And in doing so, the velocity at the top value has been employed. So we get 0 squared. That's our final velocity for this problem of our interest right now. Starting at launch, the problem ends at the top of the motion. So that final velocity is 0. We have the y component. I have to square that, and then 2 times the acceleration, and the uh, y distance is our result. I'm working this problem with upward being the positive direction, though the acceleration due to gravity has a negative sign on it. It is very important here. I'm only using numbers in the y direction. I don't use anything in the x direction mixed with some y number. You always keep the x numbers separate from the y numbers. The only exception to that is time. The time number is the same for the x and y motion. So I've squared, I've subtracted from both sides. 2 times minus 9.8 is minus 19.6. We divide by 19.6 on both sides, and we find 1.62 meters for the uh, maximum height. Now, how long is the ball in the air before it hits the ground? We're going to take advantage here of the symmetry of the motion. The time to go up to the top of the motion equals the time to go down to the ground. We're landing on level ground here, so no cliff type situation. Time up equals time down. And then we can thus say the time in the air is equal to two times the time to go up. And if we want to calculate the time to the top of the motion, we can use the first kinematic equation the v equals v naught y plus gt. Um, and g comes in as a minus 9.8. We already have the y component upward, so it's a simple matter to calculate the time going up, 0.5749 seconds. You should check this on your own calculator. And then the time in the air is doubled that, so about 1.15 seconds is our time in the air. This now allows us to do a calculation in the x direction. We want to calculate the range. How far away from the launch point do we land? So the 
equation we use for that is to recognize that in the x direction there's only one equation. Distance equals rate times time. The rate is a constant. In the x direction we're ignoring air resistance and the velocity is a constant. The rate is constant. So distance equals rate times time and we have to do a calculation for the x component of the velocity. 12 meters per second and cosine of 28 degrees provides us with the information on v naught x. If I draw it in here. This other side, this base side of the right triangle is v naught x. We use the cosine function to come up with that value and multiply by the time in the air and I come up with a range of 12.2 meters. You should uh, do that calculation and if you have any questions on this be sure to ask your instructor or you can watch some other videos. Um, there's some more of these physics uh, tutorial videos, both lectures on concepts, short lectures, and uh, lots of example problems at physics.gpclements.com. If you want to pick up a little astronomy information, astronomy.gpclements.com. Uh, there's no registration for these sites. They're free. There's nothing to buy on these sites. Uh, just hope it helps you learn physics and astronomy. Keep practicing.